A young man came to W.E. Gladstone when he was the Prime Minister of England. He was a Prime Minister of England in the late 1800s, four times. While he was Prime Minister, this young man, he was promising, brilliant, coming up kid. He's getting, he's about to graduate college. He's, he's really full of promise. Mr. Gladstone, I would appreciate you giving me a few minutes in which I might lay before you my plans for the future. The young man said, I would like to study law. Yes, said the great statesman. What then? Then, sir, I would like to gain entrance to the bar of England. Yes, young man, what then? Then, sir, I have to, I hope to have a place in the parliament, in the house of the lords. Yes, young man, what then? Then I hope to do great things for England, Britain. Yes, young man, what then? Then, sir, I hope to retire and take life easy. Young man, what then? Well then, Mr. Gladstone, I suppose I will die. Yes, young man, what then? Young man hesitated and said, I never thought any further than that, sir. Looking at the young man sternly and steadily, Gladstone said, Young man, you're a fool. Go home and rethink your life. We came to the verse. That made me think a lot in my first days of faith. The year was 2002. I was in South Jersey at a place called America's Kazakh Retreat Center. A few of you have been there. Pat's been there. I was there for a man's retreat. And in one of the rooms that they were holding their meetings, was a mural on the wall and it looked like a Poland spring bottle with pine trees and a lake <laughs> you know that picture on a Poland spring bottle a bunch of have you, have you guys been there other than Pat has anybody been to Kazakh do you know the room I'm talking about Pat it's a meeting room it's kind of like a lodge rustic it's above the, uh, where the, uh, yeah and then there's this painting. It's a huge wall painted with pine trees and a lake. And, a, and in the middle of that mural, there is a post. And to that post, on a wooden uh, engraving, read this verse. For me, uh, half, the, half the verse. It says, For me to live is Christ. I was there for three days. For three days, I looked at this plaque. And I pondered what it might have meant. Now, I understood that it was a verse from the Bible. But it just didn't sit right. It doesn't flow in grammatically, I mean, right? He, he's not saying for me to live is the way Christ wants me to live. He's not saying for me to live is... In the words of Christ. It's just for me to live is Christ. It just doesn't sit. So I was stuck there. That was the weekend that I finally surrendered and came to the Lord. But I remember this plaque vividly and this verse. And I must be upfront. 
To this day, I still can't grasp everything that is this verse. Apostle Paul, when he says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. He's saying more than for me to live is Christ-likeness. He's saying more than for me to live is as Christ would like me to live. He's saying more than that. For me to live is Christ. Is he's saying life itself is Christ. Do you ever stop and take inventory of your life? I mean, really stop and look what you're doing and more importantly, why you're doing it. You could be doing good things, noble causes. You could be doing spiritual things. you could be on the wrong track. So, coming back to this verse, what does it mean to live Christ? Life itself. Well, this is what I understood from Apostle Paul. Life itself, in its entirety, with everything, Apostle Paul was a person that was so surrendered to Christ that Christ in his life, wherever he was, everything an Apostle Paul was nothing. That's what I gather from this verse. Christ in every situation, in every instance, in every moment, in every thought, every plan, every step, every conversation, was everything. Apostle Paul was nothing. It's beyond keeping the law. It's way beyond playing a Christian. It's beyond doing things and not doing things. It's beyond a list of do's and don'ts. It's beyond being a nice person. For me to live is Christ. In the book of Colossians chapter 3, again Apostle Paul says, Life that is Christ. See, his understanding of Jesus is a lot different than many Christians today. And probably in some aspects, for us too. We don't have this total understanding of who Jesus is. Unfortunately, our understanding is most likely tainted with our own limitations, with our own expectations, with our own definitions of success, whatever that might be, opinion of others, expectation of culture, family. It's so difficult to be able to say, push all those things aside, judge your own motives, and say, for me to live is Christ. And this morning, as I was praying and asking God to, to give me direction as to what I should say and how, 
I started looking at my own life. I said, okay, what's life for me? For Apostle Paul, it was Christ. Before I could stand here and tell you guys, do the same, I have to check myself. Am I doing the same? I could tell you no. I am not. You all know me, and in, uh, in the last six, eight months, I've just threw myself into this crazy schedule for work and this and that. But is it Christ? No. It's to make a living. It, it is a noble pursuit. It's not sinful. But it's not for me to live is Christ. I believe we miss so much when we put other pursuits in place of Christ in our lives. And I'm talking to me right now. If there is any part for you, please take it. It might be noble, it might not be sinful, it might be good. But if it's not Christ, it's meaningless. Somebody said, if life is, for Apostle Paul is Christ, if life is success, if it's money, you're not going to take it with you. Others are going to spend it. If it's ambition, it's going to die with you. If it's fame, it's going to die with you. If it's anything else, it's just going to stop. Even if it's spiritual, even if it's spiritual, even if you're doing godly things, but your motives are wrong, it has no reward. You can live in a church, go from Bible study to prayer meeting to whatever, but if it's not because God is directing you that way, don't do it. Surrender to a point where God is everything and you are nothing. It's the same message every week. We get to the same point every weekend. It all comes back to surrender. You see, before I can say, for me, blank, but to die is gain, I have to say, for me, life is Christ. I have to surrender to a point where I say, Lord, none of me and all of you and we all know this, okay? It's not that we don't. But the world we're living in, the weakness of the flesh, the culture we're in, the enemy of our souls, it's nonstop working against us so that we miss this point. Life itself has to be Christ. Not the work I'm doing. Not my children. Not my husband. Not my wife. Not lacking something. A certain relationship or a, or a place or promise. Whatever it is. None of them can be where God needs to be in our lives. Now for everybody it's different. For everybody for me to live as Christ is different because his expectation for everyone is different. His plan for everyone is different. His will for everyone is different. It's up to you to find whatever that will is and live it. You know, you probably heard that Billy Graham passed away last week. 
And I shared this Friday night, but um, somebody made a comment, some pastor, and said, can you picture what heaven was like when he was going home? Thousands of people that came to the Lord because he obeyed what God told them to do. Was there to greet him. He obeyed what God asked them and told them to do. Now, in the midst of all our toil and stress and planning and things that we don't have in our lives or things that we wish were different or things were... We wish that that was somewhat different or a little better and um, much better or a different place or a different person or a person or no people, whatever the case is, a prominence or whatever it is, success. In the midst of all that, where is God? What is he telling you to do? Because none of that is going to matter on that day. For me to live as Christ is such a heavy concept. But it doesn't have to be. It could be simple. With a simple step of obedience. Simple step of, simple but not easy step of surrender. We come back to it all the time. Surrender. Fully surrender. Fully surrender. Throw yourself to God. But get yourself out of the way. We have our biggest weakness, every one of us, is our pride. We're so proud. We're prideful. We want to be recognized. We want to be accepted. We want the credit. We want the satisfaction. We want other people to say this or that. We want life according to our own standards. We want success according to our own standards. These are all battles we're facing. But we're given the tool. We're given the understanding. All these are distractions. On that day, none of these are going to matter. When we stand that day in eternity... With nothing but us and God. You will stand before Him. And the only thing that will matter on that day is what He said and what you did in return. Do you know what He's saying to you today? If you're not a believer, everybody is a believer here, I believe. First step is to believe and surrender. And second step for believers, keep surrendering every day. What is he telling you to do today? Am I so intimate like Apostle Paul, where I could say, for me, life is Christ. There is nothing else for me. Work, family, this, that, that. Nothing. First, it's Him. Everything else is secondary. You see, once we make Him first, and not our thoughts, not our decisions, not our plans, not what we do have, what we don't have, He's promising and telling us that He's going to give us all that. Jesus himself made the promise. Seek the Lord. Seek God. And all his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you. Seek him. Make him. First. And all. It's a challenge. It's a challenge for me. 
I need to remind myself, I need to do a lot better of a job than I've been doing. This is awakening for me too. Because none of this is going to matter. None. The only thing that's going to matter is what he said and what I did. So what is he telling you today? Are you spending that time with him? That quiet time with him? Just you and him. In prayerful. Meditative state. Just his word and you. Are you worried about a necklace? Or whatever. I know Joseph is worried about a necklace. Or are you worried about how the Lama Ajahn is going to come out? <laughs> or the people, or the traffic, or uh, you know, your marriage, or who I'm going to marry, when am I going to marry, how am I going to, the kids, the this, the that. What is all that but distraction? Only one thing that matters. Life itself. For death to be gain, we have to live Christ fully. For it to be gain, we have to give all. And giving all means you get out of the way and let him do everything for you. Try to get out of your own way. Say, Lord, I'm nothing. I'm placing no expectations on you. From this moment on, I am surrendering to your will. I will do what I know you're telling me to do. The basic do's and don'ts. You know everything I'm missing, emotionally, physically, um, relationally, whatever it is that's missing in your life. But I give that to you to fulfill. Here I am before you. Tell me what you want me to do now, today. And just do it. Yeah, sure, sure. Try that in a lot much of it. Yes. And uh, they do. And uh, it's kind of hurtful. But I think, you know, uh, we have to take life a day at a time and, and put ourselves in a mindset of, you know, okay, I'm going to make the best of today, Lord, and I'm uh, uh, helping to give spirit to guide me and to glorify you. And that, that helps me to. I often ask the Lord to help me to see people through his eyes and not my own. Apostle Paul still worked. 
you know, he was a tent maker, right? When he wasn't in jail, he was making tents for a living. He was going, preaching, teaching, starting churches, yes, but he was also working. So I'm not saying don't work, okay? And just the opposite, just like Pat reminded us, when you do work, you're supposed to do your best. Leda, can you take her out, please? You're supposed to do everything you do as though you're doing it to the Lord. We are supposed to work. But we're in that job when you're wrestling with the necklace, whatever it is, right? Where is your mind? What are you thinking? How are you supposed to glorify God in that, right? You see, we are told that we are the only light of the world. So your customers, your co-workers, the people you pass in the morning, God has a purpose for every single encounter that we might have. You know, we are told to be praying constantly throughout the day. We should be in a prayerful mode. That changes everything, right off the bat. Prayer shouldn't be something that we stop doing at the end of the word, amen. Prayer is a mindset. Throughout the day, all day, we need to be communicating with God. Right? You could be, just like Pat was saying, praying for his uh, co-workers, customers, or, you know, People that cut you off. <laughs> but don't pray like uh, King David did. Lord, break his nose. <laughs> you know that's in the Bible, right? <laughs> Quietly spending time with him to find out what his purpose for you is. That's, you know what, that, that's the chief end. That's, that's all we have to do. Everything else we just bring on ourselves. As far, as far as having to, we must do, whatever it is, is that. God, what do you want me to do now, today? That's it. Everything else, leave up to Him. Serve Him wholeheartedly. Today, right now. That's it. He will take care of the rest. He knows what you need. He knows who you are. He knows where you are. He knows how to bring the person that you want to meet to you. He knows how to take care of your family. He knows how to reach out to people. He knows what you need. He knows why you need it. And he will give you more than you think you need. Only if you trust him. Wait for him. He's never late. He's never, never late. Trust Him. Wait for Him. Surrender to Him. He does have the best. Surrender. Get yourself out of the way so that we can say with Apostle Paul, for me to live life itself, every moment with every thought, is Christ. Only then die, dying can be gained. Later on next week we're going to look at how he says, it's much better if I die. Hey, it's a lot better over there. But I got work to do here. So, in closing I just want to say, let's get out of our own ways and fully surrender to God and see what He will do through you. Stop striving. Stop trying to make things happen. In quietness, seek Him. Get your direction. 
and do it. And there's going to be a lot of times where you're not going to get a direction. Until further notice, you do what the Word of God tells you to. You live the life that God expects from His children. Seek the peace. Look for the peace. Let it direct your life. It's His life. It's not ours. And remember, He doesn't need our help. Surrender. That's all He wants from you. Surrender. Lord, here I am. Do with me whatever you want. Take me wherever you want me to go. Say whatever you want me to say. Do through me whatever you want to do. But this comes with a warning. For those of you that are go-getter types, get yourself out of the way. Make sure it's God you're hearing, not your own ideas. I've seen many a good people waste their lives and not accomplish anything God told them to do. Pride creeps in the way. Don't give in to it. Don't seek the limelight. Don't seek accomplishment. Don't seek success. Surrender. Let him do through you whatever he wants. Only then you will, surrender, uh, you will be successful.